Lena, uh, we looked at all the oppor all opportunities to uh, improve teacher preparation program, and um, you and the team uh, came up with multiple measures, and uh, the secretary didn't just focus on outcomes, he had some other measures. Can you talk about our broader perspective on this issue of improving teacher preparation? Sure, sure. We, um, as Richard mentioned, uh, put a report out earlier this year that looked at the federal government's role, what the role the federal government could play in improving teacher preparation. Um, and, and it was, I mean, really to connect the inputs and outcomes, that it wasn't an either or. We, we, I think everyone here agrees we, we need both. Um, we, if you look back, um, Kate's point about we can't fix, it's not, you're not going to fix yourself or go fix yourself is not the approach. Um, we, we know that and we've seen that. So we were trying to respond to that in part. Um, the Higher Education Act in 1998 required states to hold their teacher preparation programs accountable. So we've said this before. You know, look at your teacher preparation programs. Which ones are working? Which ones aren't working? Specifically, which ones aren't working, right? Because they were being held accountable for, for identifying low-performing programs. And that didn't happen. Um, so I think the Secretary mentioned twice, so I'll mention it again, that over half of states in that period, this is over a decade, never identified a single low-performing program. I don't think anybody here or here would, can imagine that that would be true. Um, so the problem there is that there's, there's not really accuracy or, or fidelity in that reporting framework. It's not, that's not working. Um, so that was one thing that we just wanted to, to touch on. Um, and to say that, that if that's not working, we should come up with something that does. Um, so we proposed a new framework, um, which was really to encourage states to um, have more accuracy and, and honesty, really, about what do you know, to your point about being humble. What do you know? What are you trying to do? And how are you doing it? We wanted real information. Um, the federal government uh, can use that information to help other states, to improve those states, to boost what's working, and to help the schools and the institutions and states that are struggling. Um, that was one point. Um, from there, we, there is, of course, the question then, well, how do you grow, grow the good ones? And what do you do about the ones that aren't so good? So once you've taken the time to try to figure that out um, and identify, uh, what are you going to do with that information? Um, we propose uh, uh, some co competitive grants. I mean, much of this, um, by the way, we would uh, um, certainly support. You see this in, in the Secretary's plan today. Um, the, the grants we, the competitive grant programs that we proposed were really to do just that, to, to grow the good ones, um, to provide support to states that were really high performing, um, to provide support to institutions that are high performing, and to provide support um, and a push for the ones that aren't. Uh, and I think, you know, we can have the conversation about, about closing, closing down, shutting institutions down, shutting programs down, but, but that's not really what our point was. I think we were very focused on, on how you improve those programs. Um, we have too many teachers that we need to prepare, I think, for us to realistically, or to us to think that it would be at all realistic to close down all the low-performing programs. So, um, so then thirdly, um, so we did, we did want to uh, uh, make, make recommendations about the reporting. Um, we wanted to make recommendations about uh, what kinds of uh, grant programs might really push states and institutions to improve and to improve the low-performers. Um, and then thirdly, we wanted to streamline the uh, financial assistance for teachers. Um, it's, it's all over the place. Um, and there are two, actually. There's two programs that support teachers, just specifically to teachers from the federal government. You've got uh, loan forgiveness and you have TEACH grants. Um, now, loan forgiveness aside, the TEACH grants, and this comes out in, in the Secretary's plan today, um, it, it's great. To move the TEACH money over into scholarships is the right thing to do. Um, what we found is not that the TEACH grants is a bad idea, it was actually the right idea. It just wasn't working in implementation. So you end up having three quarters or so of the recipients of TEACH grants that don't go into teaching, um, which means that they're not grants, they're loans. Those, they have to repay those. That wasn't, that's not the purpose of it. So it just wasn't working. Um, to move that money into the last final year as a scholarship makes a lot of sense. It avoids the problem that the TEACH grants were having where um, you have early commitment. You're requiring someone to commit early. Um, and then in the end, they change their mind. Um, so, so that certainly is, uh, seems really promising. Um, and uh, you know, all in all, 
you know, our focus in that report at least was on the role of the federal government, but there's a tremendous amount going on outside of that. To, so to see both come together, to see the federal government put forth a framework like that, and to have all of this that's going on outside, um, folks within institutions, outside of institutions pushing, um, seems like the, the right combination to really see things move in the right direction.